If you like this video, please like it and share it to your friends. Also, if you wanted to see more content like this, please do subscribe to this channel and also spread the word to your friends. And if you miss any of the videos, you can refer to this channel and also you can refer to this blog which is given below, which is forwardstyles.blogspot.com. And also, if you wanted to contribute your knowledge through wider audience, you can join us by writing it to this given email which is sharetesttube at gmail.com and also if you have any doubts on any of the videos again you can write to us over sharetesttube at gmail.com thank you for watching this video okay right here yeah. okay okay Shweta. so tell me about yourself but um, let's not cover all the details let's talk about the most recent project and also the technical stack that you have worked on so far in your entire career yeah, sure. So like, uh, uh, I have completed Bachelor of Engineering from the Roman Engineering College of Aurangabad and carrying the 5 years of experience. So in that I have conducted the various type of testing that is uh, uh, automation testing using Excel and Java, then uh, database testing using an SQL, then API testing using Postman and Rest Assured, and uh, I have extended, and manual testing as well. So I have extensive experience in the PPT framework using a Cucumber tool, hybrid framework and the data driven framework. So in my last project, so my last project was on a cloud domain. So basically this project is related to the hospital website. There are the patient information for the small patient profile, patient booking, patient booking appointment, and then uh, doctor's profile and various forms for care, like how uh, to take an appointment, you know, like if anything and you know, like that, how to speak goes over there related to the hospital. So in that project I have used an PPT framework using an Google tool. So like yeah, and uh, so in that project I have done the simultaneous testing and the manual 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 testing and the Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Uh, so you said you have been working on many different frameworks, right? Yes. Okay, can you tell me some framework? Okay, so so I start with an BDD. So BDD basically just focus on what to test, not how to test. And we know that like when we are using a Google tool under the BDD framework, there are three main files that is a picture file, step deprivation, and runner class. So mm -hmm. firstly, I have to explain one private project. So in private projects, we know that there are two by default packages that are available. SRC based Java and SRC based Java. Apart from this, there is a popular XML file is present. In this file, we all we add all the dependencies that are required to receive this package. And uh, then we have created the one more folder that is SRC based in such a So first it is an SRC main Java. So like SRC main Java, like five different packages are available. Like first is a base class. So in base class, we write so first is a base base so layer package. Right? Their package we have created and what is base class. So in base class we do all the initialization part like uh, setting an implicit weight of the timeouts and uh, after that the uh, parking and URL uh, like that all the initialization part was there and base class is the parent class for all the classes in the framework and we will extend it with the help of extension schemas. And then next it is on a config layer package. So under the config layer package we have created one config.properties file with dot properties extension. So in this file we just store the value in key pair key pair value pair format so it consists the username passwords and uh, yeah and uh, uh, like the username password so information are stored and the url stored over there and then next it is a page layer package under the page layer package we have created a page class so each and every web page in the application there should be a page class so there are various page class are present so we use a form concept over there that is the page of this model repository for storing all the web elements and perform the, performing the action on those web elements so this is the entire file validation that we are using elements this is the type of action class and moving to the element and handling the drop down uh, after that uh, handle the windows browser stuff like all the new type of methods are present over there and then next it is an up end data package so under the click data package we have stored the click data we have used some JSON files and we store JSON apart from this we have stored like XML file or you know, whatever we require in the process and then now uh, yeah, so next we will move to the SRC based Java folder. So in the SRC based Java folder, there are 
If you have to rate yourself on Java, how do you rate on a scale of 10? Scale of 10 is. Okay. Mm, right. What are the Java concepts that you have used in your project? Java concepts like uh, first is that uh, in OpenC you have used like uh, parent classes and base class and this is related to properties into another class in base class and all this thing. And uh, then we have used uh, like the uh, page object model, like because it's mostly that has it, like we have used that top concept over here, and uh, like for uh, storing the web elements and uh, performing the action, then like uh, listener is also there, like it can interface with listeners events. Interface is already uh, also used, like created the method in a one class as an interface, and we just uh, provide the implementation into the another class. For example, page class we have generated multiple page classes, so simply let us do this. Right over in, into the interface and just uh, provide the implementation in that one. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, did you use any private classes in your framework? Private classes? Actually, uh -huh. we don't use like a private class. Okay. Like access scope remains within the class, and yeah, we are not able to manipulate it. But we can call it private methods. I know that. Mm -hmm. Did you use getters and setters extensively in your framework? Or getter and setter, sorry, getter and setter method we will use in the REST API, like REST Workshop framework. Like for uh, like under the Pojo class, like we have created an uh, uh, variables, and like private variables are created. Because we are not able, like after that, we are not manipulated. Uh, and uh, in that, we have just used a getter setter method, like getter for fetching uh, the variable values and setter for setting the values to that variable. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So let's say you have 10 classes, okay, and each class is having some methods in it, and, and all the 10 classes have different, different methods. And you wanted to use all the methods in a class. So how do you do it? Ten methods are there. No, ten classes. Methods. There are ten classes. Okay. And each class is having some methods of its own. And with the help of optimization, this is possible. I mean, create object of that class name and just call it the object name. Mm -hmm. So if you have to use uh, methods of all the ten classes, in a class, you have to create 10 objects, huh? Yes. Okay, is there any other way? Uh, like, with the help of the class name also, like, methods are a static and simply call class name dot uh, method name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, are you aware of solid principles like in Java? Uh, no. Okay. So, what is the selling inversion that you are using? Uh, 3.149. Okay. So, yours is BD different, then, right? Yes. Okay, do you use test annotations? Sorry, test NG annotations. Sorry, like test NG annotations, which are there, like you are saying. <laughs> so, are you using them in your framework? Not in BDD framework, but you would be like test engine framework. We are using that, and we are using like, accurate test annotations. 
So in your frame framework, you are not using custom geometry. It's the only way you are. You are also using listeners, huh? Yeah. It, not in current frame, like previous, but in testing, we have used that one listener. Okay. Mm, right. Did you say that you have implemented CI/CD pipelines in your project? Oh yeah, in Azure we have implemented this. Okay, and okay, Azure DevOps is what you have used as a pipeline. Huh? Is there a separate DevOps team or you yourself manage that? No, no, firstly they help us like how to create this, then like how to create a pipeline because uh, in Azure DevOps pipeline option was also there, we need to add some files over there by creating the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And after that, filtering also with the help of like providing the annotations, actually it's just a uh, separate the scenarios with the help of migration and some consider in the sanity like that. So, particular time we can apply that we can run it. So, after that, we will manage that. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay, uh, how many team members uh, do you have? Like, is it just only one person you are in, in the automation? Uh, no, actually, the team was very big. Like, 40 person was there regarding the QA, like 12 QA was there, but everyone is at as an individual. Is it an agile methodology you you follow? Or? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Okay. So, what is the length of your sprint? Three weeks sprint. Okay. And do you do automation continuously, or the automation is done already in your? Uh, no, no, automation starts from scratch, so we don't have any input. So we mm -hmm. have created some automation from scratch. Okay, is the automation completed now, or is it, is it still uh, going on? No, no, completed. All are completed, submitted also. Okay. So now it's just the execution that you guys do for each team, huh? I would say. No, I'm not getting a point. Actually, we are just uh, getting the script also and executing also. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any input from the client end because the project was started from the scratch. Mm -hmm. This project is not completely developed yet. Like it's still under development, and the automation is also still going. It's not like the entire application is automated. Like is that what you're saying? At that moment, or like previously, we have not completed. No, no, no. The project which you are. Now it's like completed. Project was completed. Ah, project is already completed. Ah, uh, yes. So now your uh, entire automation is a sort of regression script, which will be executed. For each sprint, or the project itself is completely done and handed over to support. Sorry, but can you please explain to me? Okay, so you your your automation is done, right? That that's correct, right? Still, you are not developing it yet, right? And the automation suit that is handed over to support team for them just to execute it. Or is there still developing going on, developing of the new test test cases or scripts into the automation suite? Is it still uh, going on? Uh, don't know. Actually, we have just submitted the project to the client. And, okay. Uh, like, client is was like they are just taking the project from the another one. They okay. They are giving to the persistent one. Now they they have also QA, so they mm. are performing. Like, if they want to change, they can, and they want to like uh, do the maintenance Customize activities. Them. They are Okay, right. So when you are uh, developing the scripts, right? So it goes into the this three week sprint. That's how it is completed, right? So do you do developments parallelly along with the developers, or how exactly uh, that your automation scripts are falling into the sprint uh, week? Actually, we have created the another like dashboard for the automation. Basically, what happened? Like sprint was sprint to like. Uh, like all the users, like user stories are in the beginning mode, and user developers also take a few like take some time, and we don't get the user story for the manual automation, like manual execution also. Mm -hmm. 
So, do you have different environments that you execute your test cases into, or is it only one environment? No, actually, QA environment also, and then this is pre-prod and production environment also. Not an exact production, but pre-prod, pre-UAT was created like that. So, on that also, we are using QA. Do you have different test cases for each environment, or is it the same set of test cases? Same set of test cases, only need to change the username and password like that. Otherwise, it's working properly. How do you maintain them across different environments? Like, if you have to execute the test cases in QA environment, then you have to execute the same set of test cases in Java environment. Uh, is there anything that you have to take care of, or they'll just execute them? Uh, uh, no, actually, like, uh, actually, like, uh, not on Dev environment. Configuration. Huh? Oh, yes. Okay. So, what does this configuration file is contain? Config dot properties file contains basically URL that we have to pass, okay. username, password, and this. Okay. So, apart from using this property files, is there any other way that you can differentiate or maintain test cases different for different environments? Um. For like we sorted the test cases with the help of the task configuration sanity address. So on pre UAT we are executing the sanity one without going with the liquidation. On QI we executed the both. Okay. What is abstraction? Um abstract like uh abstract consists so abstract class consists and uh both incomplete and complete methods. So we just put abstract keyword in front of the class. So it becomes an abstract class, and in front of the method name, it becomes an abstract method. And uh, we are not able to create the object of the abstract class. So in that case, we have to create an one concrete class. So with the help of the extends keyword, and uh, then uh, which uh, in this class we are just giving the definition to all the concrete methods which are present under the abstract class. And uh, suppose abstract class consists of ten methods out of the five 
examination is incomplete whether that class become also an abstract class so we need to uh, like take care of this also take care of the implement all this method mm -hmm. and yeah in various access modifier we can use over there and we can initialize the data member also mm -hmm. Okay, can you explain me uh, some difficulties that you have faced while designing your automation framework? While designing the automation framework? Mm -hmm. If you are designing this... Any yeah, issues that you have faced and how you sorted them out? Most of the, like, uh, framework was done very, uh, like, quite... Uh, but uh, like when we are attaching the screenshot, that we think we have to take care like how see the attach while well, using an open number framework when we have taken an attribute in a new variable that we have attached things. And after that there is another thing, uh, like there is a calendar and we need to handle the calendar also like the help of day, day or month. So this is taking at a time like uh, because there is a time calendar for changing and this is not a static one, so we have to capture the each and one values and then we have to perform. And uh, multiple, like sometimes there are one exception we did not like because we are just not giving the proper part of the work with the properties file while accessing the like, prop, like data members of the files. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, just one minute. So the APIs, right, which you have worked on, uh, is that automated or that's a manual execution? Uh, automated also, like using a postman also and uh, using a RESPER show framework also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like uh, uh, in the uh, like postman in general, like we are just checking, like after applying the game to post method, we are just checking a response, like what we get response for it. Status or status type, how much time is required, during the time or not. And uh, similarly, in a like in a register, so like by automating, we are just capturing the uh, body, and uh, after that, we are just getting a status, status go header, and uh, status line like that. And with the one in the validating the mail, also if you want to validate like or uh, F name and like email ID, if you want to do that. Uh, right. So when when you are automating your test cases, right in Postman, why do you want to go to REST Because customized report uh, what we can narrate in the REST assure, and it is not uh, possible in the Postman because there is a different type of report that we can narrate. Like if you want to Okay, you are talking about reports, right? So, do you know Newman? Newman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Okay, right. So, what is the other difference you said that is there in the rest shoot but not there in the postman? Data files, huh? Okay, you said three Sorry. differences, right? Like why you want to move to rest assured uh, from Postman. One is about reporting part. We take the simple script in the util class also by uploading the file and we are just calling it using the step definition class like for the file uploadation. And we don't need to like uh, create the data set similar or like create the request for uploadation file or like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Uh, do you use uh, weights in your framework? Can you please please ask me? Weights, weights, weights. Yes, I use. I use an implicit weight, explicit weight also. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are the weights that are there, first of all? Basically, like, oh, this, like why we are using an weights. Hmm, right. Synchronization comes in picture, like, uh, sometimes, uh, we will. Sometimes, like web elements or the variables taking a time uh, to execute the instruction, and uh, like uh, web elements are executing the instruction as per their time, and test cases need some more extra time to perform the operation. That time we have to like, provide the synchronization in between them. That mm -hmm. 
Difference between implicit weight and explicit weight. Yeah. So, like implicit weight tells uh, the web driver to wait a certain amount of time before throwing. No such element is ever exception. And uh, uh, implicit weight is uh, applicable globally in the uh, class or in the web to all the web elements in the web page. And uh, it's not applicable to the one of the line of statement. And while going with explicit weight, explicit weight tells the web driver to wait a certain condition or maximum. So while using the uh, explicit weight, we have to use external resources, and when we have to apply the weight to a specific line of code or the uh, test case, then we are going with the explicit weight. And uh, explicit weight, like first we have to create an object of the web driver weight class by passing a driver reference to the event. Then with the help of this web driver weight object, we are just calling it to build method like until method weight dot until, and after that we are just writing expected condition dot like using the dot element. Okay, element is to be taken on the particular element, mm -hmm. on the particular web element. Okay, if I use both implicit weight and explicit weight, right? I must allow me to scrub what I want to at the time of execution. Like when we are using an implicit weight, it is applicable to all the web elements. And like if we reduce the time, like if I apply 30 seconds, mm -hmm. I use a 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. There is the sleep method, right? In Selena. I mean, it's a Java method, of course. So, when we use both thread.sleep method and also if you use web driver weight also in the same script, so what will happen? Different between no such element exception and web element not found. Web element, no such element exception like element not present or no more exists from the web page. Mm -hmm. Did you face both the exceptions in while you are executing them? So all these three which you mentioned before, no such element, element not found, stale element, and null pointer exception. So you have you have faced all of them, huh? Okay, how do you handle those exceptions? Like if you get to know. Hmm. Sometimes we are, uh, like, the element, we want, like, sometimes we are, uh, like, proper, like, we are just storing all the data into the, uh, proper, configure the properties file or this and file, then we are not, for all that particular key value, 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 key value,
Mm-hmm. What do you what do you write in your try cash block to handle that exception? Uh, try the try block to line up four and cash block to handle the new user that is from the try block. So cash cash under that exception then then you can write the cash under that exception. Mm-hmm. So when you get no such element exception, what, I mean, what do you write in in the cash block? I need to write first no such element exception. No need to write. So the script fails. The script uh, stops execution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you find stale element exception, then how do you handle? So okay, when each exception is found, the test case is failing and the execution is holding. That's what is happening. Huh? Yes, sir. And then you debug it manually and, and then again you don't. Yes, right. So okay, for example, if let's say if you don't write a uh, try catch block, even then the test case fails and the execution halts over there, right? At that point, saying that no such element found. Then what is the point of writing a try catch? Okay, Shweta. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.